Thanks for joining us. I'm Sarah Masler Donar. Five Republican lawmakers have now proposed impeaching the state's top elections official, Megan Wolf. The lawmakers claim Megan Wolf has mismanaged her office. This comes as the Senate voted to reject Wolf's nomination for another term. But Democrats and the state's attorney general claim there was no nomination to vote on in the first place. Attorney General Josh Call filed a lawsuit asking the court to clarify what's happening with that nomination. And until that happens, Wolf says she's staying on the job. Wolf responded to the resolution. In a statement, she said, quote, The claims in this resolution have been thoroughly examined through numerous audits, investigations, and lawsuits, and they have shown that Wisconsin's elections are run with integrity. It's irresponsible for this group of politicians to willfully distort the truth when they've been provided the facts for years, end quote. Here with me now is Republican Senator Chris Kapinga. Appreciate you taking the time this morning. Yeah, thanks for having me. So you did vote to fire Megan Wolf in the Senate. We yep. now have a proposal from these five Republican lawmakers that does contain reasons to potentially impeach Megan Wolf. Would you support mm -hmm. that? Should it move out of the uh, the? Should it move forward? Yeah. So the process is the assembly would have to vote a, a simple majority vote to impeach. And then if that takes place, then it would go over to the Senate where two-thirds would have to happen. So right now the discussion is in the Assembly, do they feel that there is enough reason with Megan Wolf not listening to the Senate's action, which we took. We voted her down through advice and consent so that the Senate has said she no longer is, we don't have confidence in her and she is not officially in that office. So the, the assembly is trying to determine, is there enough evidence to impeach her? So that's the discussion going on right now. And I have concerns if she does not vacate that office, I definitely think there may be probable cause to go to a trial. And so there are some things in the articles that do contain accusations that have been debunked or were directives that Wolf carried mm -hmm. out on behalf of the bipartisan commission where she did not have a say, quote, her role in enabling unlawful absentee voting in long-term care facilities without special voting deputies. That mm -hmm. came to her from the commission. She carried that out and she has gone on record to say she feels like a scapegoat in this whole conversation. There are concerns as you say yep. about her actions, but her actions are just at the directive of the commission. So why go after Wolf this way? Mm -hmm. Well, the, the trial would go through the reasons why. So what has happened is there's a proposal which lists out, again, it's, a, it's some assembly mm -hmm. um, representatives have come out with that. So those are just some concepts. They're saying, hey, here are some reasons why we feel there's enough evidence to go to a trial in the assembly. So what is the final, if they get to a trial, they would have to go through that and that's where they would actually lay out, here are all the reasons why we feel it is, and then they would vote on it. So we don't know what that is at this point, but the contention or the concern from the Senate side is, we have done our advice and consent and she has ignored that. And that is our job to do and that needs to be carried out, especially with the elect, head election official, our concern is, this needs to be something that is neutral. She cannot be political in any way. And a lot of the things that are being done right now are, are construed as actions that are definitely political. And we can't have that in a lot of offices in the state of Wisconsin. But again, that's part of the trial process to determine what grounds is there, is it legitimate, and then we take a vote on that. So are you gonna hold off on saying whether you support this or not until it gets to the Senate? It's so early, it's just circulating. Yeah. So. Yeah, Support we, or not, for, you're not so, saying. Right. The trial in the Senate would start based on the impeachment uh, vote that takes place in the Assembly. So uh, as the President of the Senate, I don't even know yet what that final document would be if they choose to go down that road. That's when I would take it up and say, okay, now we have to make a decision in the Senate to determine if this is probable cause. And then we'd have to have two-thirds of the Senate say, yes, we feel that these reasons do have uh, legitimacy and we need to take action on it. So let's move on now. Republicans have left Governor's, Governor Evers' special session on workforce open. Yep. You are the vice chair of the committee on Senate organization that has now assigned that package Correct. to uh, uh, the Senate Committee on Economic Development and Technical Colleges. Is that a signal that lawmakers will consider Governor Evers' proposals? 
Uh, we will we will analyze his proposal. So what's interesting about that is the governor and the legislature, at least the, the legislative Republicans, agree that there is opportunity to do some things here that will help with the workforce. Are those things that are, are they the same thing? I have a feeling that they will not be the same exact thing, but they'll, they'll be the same flavor. So there will most likely be amendments to whatever he has put forward. Um, you know, for, for us, a big thing is work requirements. If you're going to be on government assistance, we want you looking for work because that's your best opportunity of getting up and out of poverty. Those are very popular with the public. Those are things we push. Governor Evers does not believe in that. He's pulled back on the work requirements. That's a very important part of what we want to see move forward in this package if we get one. Democrats have introduced their own version of child care counts. Mm -hmm. Do you think Republicans are going to take that legislation seriously after rejecting the funding for the federal program on the state level. Yeah. So the big thing with child care, this is interesting. So I, I just talked probably about a month and a half ago with a family who had child care in the state of Florida and who had child care in the state of Wisconsin. And they said that the state of Wisconsin is twice as expensive as the state of Florida. So what we're doing is going, why is that? And it ha doesn't have anything to do with government funding. It has everything to do with regulations that are in place that make it extremely prohibitive for families who need to put their kids in childcare to be able to afford it. So that's gonna be our attack is we're gonna go after regulations because we can figure out why is the state of Florida so much cheaper for, for working parents to put their kids in childcare. That's what we wanna go after. And so that package of Republican authored bills has passed out of the assembly. Right now, it could be considered by the Senate. How do you think they'll fare when the Senate considers right, we'll them? We'll have to let it kind of go through the process. Yeah. It'll go to the committee, they'll have the hearings, and then we'll see what comes out of committee on that. Senator Kappenga, thanks so much for the time this morning. Yeah, thanks for having me.